Hey everyone, this is Danielle, your environmental toxin expert and educator. And today I invited on my friend Aaron. And Aaron and I have been traveling in the same circles for probably a year, year and a half. I brought I bought some products from her at a networking meeting and just fell in love with her, fell in love with what she's doing. I'm really excited. I think there's some great things on the horizon for her. She is definitely um, she's definitely doing it right. And I want to share her products with you, but let's start with Erin. Let's talk to start with your story. What, what brought you to earth, to bringing earth organics to the world and natural products that you make out of your own backyard and out of your own kitchen? <laughs> You know, I'm still kind of flabbergasted uh, where I'm at these days because five years ago, I was an accountant and a project manager. I moved um, DHL from Wilmington to CVG and I was organizing semi truck loads of equipment. I mean, I was completely doing something else. Um, and I started to get sick. Um, well, at first, I had trouble getting pregnant. So we tried for well over a year to get pregnant. That's when I found out that um, I had hypothyroid. So and a that's. Lot of, I was going to say a lot of women start this toxin-free, low-tox journey because of infertility, and it's, yeah, there's just a huge, huge segment there of women that cannot get. I, I like I tease. I'm I'm going on fifty, and I was pregnant with my first daughter at seventeen. And we used to laugh about how we were trying not to get pregnant. And now we have this generation that is struggling to get pregnant. Not that you want to get pregnant at 17, but I'm just saying in the 20 somethings and the 30 somethings, we have this huge infertility issue. And I blame a lot of it on toxin load. Yeah, I, I think, I think that's a big contributor. You know, I was, I could tell which side of my body was ovulating. I, you know, I could feel it. So I didn't think there was an issue. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as I got started on medications, pregnant in like two months, like so fast. But then, you know, it's like, okay, why aren't I feeling better? You know, and I wanted to be more proactive. And the doctor I was seeing at the time wasn't. So I went and saw um, um, a local lady, Nyla Goldenberg, mm -hmm. and she is amazing. And we started in the Cincinnati area. She is. Okay. She's more um, holistic approach. Would much rather look at diet and um, herbal and kind of think outside the box. Um, found out I had Hashimoto's. I I have MTHFR, the um, homeozygous. I have two genes of the C six six seven. So you know, I got I got to be you know the best of the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have PCOS. And then in the past two years, I found out that I have hyperpots. So when I stand up, um, my blood has a hard time reaching my heart and my brain. Mm -hmm. The hyper side, I don't pass out, which was unusual. Um, so I just kind of get black vision, my head hurts, um, and my heart rate goes up to like 180. Um, and then what else came along with that? Um, something else. You know, they all just... They all have letters. They all trickle. They trickle in, yeah. right? Yeah. So at, at the time, four years ago, five years ago, it was easy to find soaps and shampoos that were more natural based, less toxins. Um, deodorant is where it was like, okay, I'm hearing a lot of my friends want a natural deodorant. I really didn't try anything off the shelf. I went to my mom and she had already been making our own lip balm wool dryer balls or sunscreen. So I kind of knew it was in the same kind of family. And I'm like, I could figure this out. Um, did a couple test runs, had to adjust the formula about eight times. Um, and that's really when it took off is when people started using the deodorant and it was working. And then it was like, well, I need a bug spray. So let me look into the herbs and let me look into the essential oils. And then it just started snowballing of all these products that I had a need for. I heard other people did, and I did research, figured out the formulas, and um, I'm loving my job. I'm yeah. loving, I mean, offering, not a job when you get up in the morning, right? It's not, it's not, it's been, it's been great. 
Yeah. Um, so I specifically wanted to talk about hand sanitizers today and then your tooth uh, powder. Um, because in my 21 day detox, I talk about no fluoride. Um, and what are some good alternatives like oil pulling, um, obviously finding toothpaste without fluoride in it. Um, even mouthwash is somewhat dangerous. Uh, we've even found out in the past year and a half that your floss can be dangerous. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so, but let's dive into, let's start with the pits. Let's start with, you know, cause again, I reached out for hand sanitizer cause while we're filming this, Five years from now, we're going to be laughing about all this being right. locked down. I mean, not that it's a laughing matter, but we're we're going through the coronavirus pandemic right now. We are on lockdown. We're doing this Zoom call because we can't be together. Um, but anyway, let's start out with pits. Let's because your your this is what my grandsons use, and I know a lot of moms have said, you know, I can't believe my eight-year-old is starting to have pit smell. Or I see consistent posts um, on the internet of, oh my gosh, you know, I've been using this, all of a sudden my pits are broke out. How, why is this happening? So can you tell me about why, well, just tell me about how your, yeah. your or not a uh, perspirant, antiperspirant. We don't want antiperspirant. We want our lymph to drain. So why we want deodorant and how you came up with your formulas. Yeah, so we're not allowed to use the word antiperspirant because that's uh, contributed to the aluminum. So mm -hmm. whereas I can say I'm going to stop you from sweating, you know, that may not be the case. We're going to help um, alleviate some of it, mm -hmm. but it's good to sweat. I mean, you're only going to sweat out of your hands, feet, pit. So it's got to get out some way. We can't exactly, just... Exactly. And people are like, I don't want to sweat. It's like, I understand you sweat a lot. A lot of, uh, some of that can be fixed with diet very easily. Um, at least the smell. <laughs> Hormones have a lot to do with it too, but it's, uh, again, you're, you're, it is your body's detoxing process. We all need to sweat. Yeah, yeah. So uh, baking soda is the key ingredient to deodorants to help balance that pH um, because the BO is coming from the fungus that is, you know, building up on your armpits. So you're going to get that from an off pH balance. Um, so baking soda is key. Uh, even magnesium oil is great to help balance that pH. Um, so I throw a little bit in that in some of my formulas. And that's, most people are deficient in magnesium. So another, you know, it, magnesium helps, again, regulate those hormones, right? <laughs> right. You need to sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's good. And um, I do have like a deodorant spray in testing, um, and it's magnesium based and you'll see if you start using something like that, it's going to burn initially. And then once you have your magnesium level to an optimal mm -hmm. level, it doesn't burn anymore. So that's when, you know, you're kind of getting what your body needs. Yeah. I discovered that cause I was making a, I like to make my homemade stuff too, but it's so much easier now just to buy stuff from you. Thank you for making it for all of us. Um, but I was making my own, uh, shea butter, uh, magnesium whip and I was putting it on my leg. Well, first I started with my feet cause I felt the burn and everyone was warning, warning me about the burn. And I worried, I warn everyone else you're going to get burned for, you know, it's not a bad burn but it's spicy. <laughs> so I started just putting it on my feet and then I started moving up my legs and now I don't even feel it when I put it on. So definitely you get, you'll, like you said, you'll get that buildup. So initially there is a stinging, I guess. Right. It's like an alcohol sting. Yeah. It comes and goes real fast. Yep. Um, and then in my extra strengths, I also add in active charcoal. So we are seeing a lot of use of this active charcoal lately. Um, I use it many different ways and, uh, sorry, my power just notified me. I'm getting low. <laughs> um, it's going to help detox as you sweat because you may sweat. You may just be a little, I don't know, moist, you know, it's mm -hmm. not anything like you have pit stains. Yeah. Um, but it also holds water weight. So, I mean, multiple benefits from having that active charcoal in there. Active charcoal is an awesome, awesome material. I don't know why we don't use more of it. Right. Um, 
so what if someone is allergic to the the um are you using arrowroot or is it arrowroot yeah arrowroot powder is a substitution for baking soda mm -hmm. um some people can be allergic to baking soda or have a sensitivity to it mm -hmm. um and will break out you can also get it if somebody is using too much baking soda so gotcha. i forget what the percentage is, it is within the formula but if somebody's going over that percentage, it would cause anybody to irritate. Mm -hmm. um, another thing to look at is essential oils. What essential oils are you using? My lavender is the top seller. So I use lavender and vanilla mm -hmm. and um, it doesn't work for me. I will start stinking in a couple hours, but my fresh fennel and my tea tree, those will hold over for two days. Mm -hmm. so, so it and just goes to show that uh, you know, everybody, I, I, I'm an oiler too. People think that some of these people think that essential oils are the be all end all. And if it works for me, it should work for you, but it's no different than anything else in this world. What may work for me may not work for you. Everybody's body is different. It's called bio individual, individual, <laughs> bio individuality. And again, you're, you don't know what your toxin load is. There's just so many factors that come in. Um, how quickly you absorb through your skin, how quickly you do detox, um, what you're eating, exactly what you're eating, your diet all comes into factors. Um, well, th that was really great information on the pits. I know you also make a pit detox. So I'm just going to put that out there. Um, yeah. when would someone seek, uh, when have you found that someone seeks out a pit detox? So the pit detox is going to be like a face mask for your armpits. It um, involves bentonite clay and the active charcoal again you're gonna add um, apple cider vinegar is I mean that's the greatest thing you can use if you don't have that yeah. water's fine um, I've, I've always said I'm gonna start a uh, um, an Instagram on nothing but vinegar lemons and baking soda because you can pretty much do anything with those three things right <laughs> right because after I apply to my armpits, I put the paste on my face or scrub it into my scalp because of, mm -hmm. you know, just- Oh, I've pollution. never done the scalp thing. I have to do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so you're gonna do this when switching to a natural deodorant to um, kind of pull all the toxins from your commercial deodorant or other deodorants um, and kind of give you a fresh, clean slate to work on. Um, you can also do this monthly is what I do because when I'm going through my hormonal cycle, I sweat from like deep within. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of helps just pull that gunk out real fast and then I'm, I'm good for the next three weeks. And as we're filming this again, you are still taking custom orders for, um, for your, uh, yes, yes, still. Yeah. Okay. I, just want to make sure. <laughs> I'm loving this option. My biggest thing was um, becoming friends with a whole lot more vegans. Um, mm -hmm. And they don't have too many options, especially, you know, extra strength. And whereas I would love to have 20 options on the shelf, I only have six. That's really, mm -hmm. you know. Um, well, again, if you're going to go to the grocery store, where where's some of your, uh, you you have them in like, what, farmer's markets, um, your jungle right. gyms in Cincinnati. You're at all these uh, small mom, or I wouldn't say small mom and pops, but mostly mom and pops. Um, yeah, you can't have too many choices on a shelf. You got to give them that. Right. And, yeah. and like we just talked about, everybody is so unique. So mm -hmm. my custom deodorant that you can get online is very nice because we can get you a vegan. We can get you extra strength. We can do, we can work together to find out what you really need what oils you're attracted to and make mm -hmm. a blend that's really for you. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So let's move on and talk about hand sanitizer. Cause again, we're, we're filming this during the Corona pandemic of 2020 and uh, you've been really quiet about your hand sanitizer. I went looking for mine and I left it at work. It's on my work desk. So I yeah. thought I have purchased your hand sanitizer. Tell us what we need to know about hand sanitizer. Yeah. So, um, before this pandemic, I was making a non-alcohol based hand sanitizer. So within there I use, um, my skin perfect pH, which is from my 
Kangen machine. Mm -hmm. um, so I use the water from that. I use aloe vera, witch hazel, and then we really fight it with essential oils. Mm -hmm. um, since this has happened. And, oh, and that's ahead. probably still good for kids because I know a lot of moms prefer not to use alcohol. Right. Well, it's not CDC full blown what they recommend. Some moms prefer not to use alcohol based. Right. And that is really kind of where my creation was coming mm -hmm. from. I mean, I love the Dr. Bronner's that I was using at the time, but I was handing it back to my three-year-old and I'm like, uh, ah, yeah, you know, this will get us to where we can get home and wash our hands. Um, you know, so I, I typically make that. I, I am out of stock of that. I haven't even had time because I am following the CDC guidelines and making, well, they suggest to make at least 60% alcohol base. Mm -hmm. So currently mine is 71.25 with a little bit of more from the witch hazel that I have in there. Um, there's uh, so let me just kind of give you some facts that um, I kind of wrote down yesterday. Oh, perfect. There's, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Different kinds of alcohol that you have. So you have grain alcohol, which is ethanol, um, rubbing alcohol, which is isopropanol, and then you have a chemical sibling of that, which is called n-propanol. So um, everybody cleared the shelves of rubbing alcohol when this first started happening. And, um, you know, in my thought, I'm like, well, I'm going to start using ethanol, the grain alcohol. It's a little bit more natural anyway. It works just the same. And right now it's just easier to come by. So um, I use that along with aloe vera, witch hazel. I put in some vegetable glycerin to give it less of a liquid, but more sticky without being too sticky. Um, vitamin E oil and then lavender essential oil and tea tree. So what happens and why we need the alcohol right now is the alcohol dissolves the outer coating of bacteria and viruses and basically makes them explode. Um, so the alcohol disrupts lipid and protein molecules that make up the bacteria membrane. And when that outer coat falls apart, the bacteria can't live. So, and that's what soap does. That's what soap and water does. Right. So, and, and you have to be careful with the soap, the antimicrobial soap. Um, those actually, when you use something like that, that is what's going to create the, um, germs that are, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, resistant. Yes. Anything that has antibiotic in that soap or in the hand sanitizer, um, can cause those germs to be resistant. And then that's when you worry about, uh, those Super germs. Yeah, because in, uh, I, I just remember the last time that we had this flu scare in two, I forget which one it was, forgive me, but 2008, 2009, because this is when my first grandson was due and my daughter was pregnant and going to college. So we had hand sanitizer everywhere. We had soft soap with the uh, triclosan in it. We, we were all just thinking we were being safe. And then in 2015, the FDA or yeah, the FDA came out and said no more triclosan in hand soaps or hand sanitizers. But that doesn't mean that people don't, they put other antibacterial products in these soaps and these sanitizers at this point, which people don't understand that all we're doing is creating these super bugs, like you said. Yeah. Um, so again, we while you don't see triclosan in hand soaps and hand sanitizers, it's still in a ton of products like your shampoo, it's in your toothpaste, et cetera, so forth. And that's why we have to be really knowledgeable on the virus and the bacteria that we're trying to, um, trying to fight. Right. Trying yeah. to just get through, you know, this yeah. isn't, um, this isn't, you know, something that I would continue to use throughout, you know, the rest of the time. But right mm -hmm. now I it's, it's highly important that we are using bacteria formula or sorry, alcohol based formulas. Yes. And when you, when you go through somebody like me or any other local businesses, I mean, we don't have the ability to add in all these crazy filler ingredients that could be hiding, lurking, mm -hmm. harmful, 
you know, component. Well, and again, a lot of these antibacterial uh, ingredients that are put into all of our different, um, our different products are because they're shelf stabilizers, not necessarily because they are, you know, helping us um, right. slapping on an antibacterial label on it. Um, again, it's more of a shelf sta stabilizer. Like I had a person the other day that would kept asking me, she's like, I'm making my homemade products um, during this whole uh, Corona thing, uh, uh, pandemic. And she's like, I need to know what preservative to put in my house cleaner. And I was like, that she's homemaking. And I was like, one, you're probably not going to have access to much of anything right now because it's almost impossible because where does everyone go? Amazon. If you're not like, you know, mass producing it. And then I was like, but if you're making small batches just to use in your home, I'm not really sure that you need that preservative. Um, right. Especially when we are using antibacterials as preservatives in all these products because it's what makes it shelf stable. So finding someone locally making it like you is awesome because, you know, we can get small batches when we need them. We, you know, and I always say less is more like it's right. great that your toothpaste goes on sale and you get buy two, get one free, but that's like a year's worth of toothpaste. So instead of buying more be and, and being exposed to the toxins that are in it, because again, we've got to make it sh shelf stable. Why are we not just buying smaller batches, especially from local companies? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So I think, was that it on your sanitizer? I'm sorry. I just was like no. adding to it, <laughs> adding to the history of why we put the antibacterial in, but now we've discovered that that wasn't such a good idea. And now we don't put it in our products. And it takes a lot for our government to come in and intervene and make a rule like that. You know, yeah. it's very, you know, there's two instances I can think of in like the last 10 years where it made national news and people were like, Ooh, I got to be aware of this, but it's like, we need to be aware every day because health right now, um, people have thought of health as a luxury. And I think that after this pandemic, I foresee that people will be looking at health is no longer a luxury. Health is what we need to be paying attention to instead of a luxury item like a car. Because th they really do. They think of their body like the last thing. I'd rather have this fancy car than take care of my body. Or I'd rather yeah. have a dozen of whatever, this one item, and, and five different colors instead of just buying one color that I really like, you know, I see it a lot with my clients. It's just this over, we've become this over purchasing, uh, uh, over purchasing, um, read the headlines, read or, or read the, um, the marketing and listen to everybody rave, rave, but yet the product didn't work for me. So it just kind of goes on its shelf, but if it's not broke, don't, fix it, you know, especially with a product. Right. Anyway, sorry, going out, going on a rabbit hole, down a rabbit hole there. <laughs> it's hard to stay out of the rabbit hole. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Cause really you and I are out here. Um, I call you one of my partners, um, yeah. because you're out here also preaching the, the gospel of low tox, no tox, yeah. you know, living and it's, and it's, it's so important. important it's really informing people because they don't know and they don't know that they don't know until somebody says something and yep. then they're like oh my gosh you know all that stuff is in my dryer sheet like yes you're wearing your dryer sheet every day think about that and then when yep. you figure out you find out that your dryer sheets are are causing your hormones to go wacky you're like what and then you, you go, they get into this guilt, you know, oh my gosh, coulda, woulda, shoulda. And I'm like, you know what? You, you didn't know. And yeah. now you do. And now I bet you're going to take a closer look at everything you're bringing in your home. And that's what, uh, and that, when that light bulb goes off, that's when I get so excited because I'm <laughs> like, okay, if this person's not loading their dryer with these dryer sheets, because I can tell when my neighbors are, I, you know, and I live on an acre and a half. I mean, my, my neighbors are pretty spread out for me, but me just walking out the door, I can smell my neighbor's dryer vent sheets 
you know, I don't know if it's their, they're using a combo of liquid and then they're putting dryer sheets in, but I'm like, right. if I can get one last per less person to use these products, that's one less pollutant going into the air that I'm going to breathe. And that eventually, you know, the rest of the world's going to breathe. Right. And all that's going in the trash and landfills. So you're getting double doses yeah. of just one load. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no doubt that we can't do it all because some people like I, people get nervous. I, I, I think I've shared this with you. People get nervous handing me like a plastic cup at like a networking event or something. I'm like, dude, we right. can't do it all, but we can protect right. ourselves in our home and we can be conscious, conscientious of about what we're bringing in our home. And we can also be conscientious about what we're putting in our landfills. So uh, right. I know you, you, uh, compost like me. And I yeah. just try to find all, like, even when I'm cleaning out plastics from my home or I bring home something that's in plastic, I think, what can I do with this? Like, uh, we had these like, um, food containers that the, it was like a dish that this food had came in and we had a bunch of them and we kind of saved them. And I, I tr tend to put them in the recycle. Um, but over Christmas I was able to make, um, my daughter had exchange students. And so I made a whole bunch of exchange student care packages. So I took these, they look like school boxes and I took pens and, um, pencils, stuff that they would need, erasers, post-it notes. I put all these little things in care packages and that's how I sent them out. It was almost like a little school box because again, exchange yeah. students don't exactly arrive here with a plethora of school supplies. So at Christmas time, I'm like, I bet they're going to need some school supplies at this point. Uh, so it's, it's just a matter of shifting the way you look at your products coming in and going out of your home. Right. Right. All right. And, um Excuse me real quick. You're welcome to talk. I'm going to run and grab um, my charger. Oh, okay. <laughs> While Erin is um, grabbing her charger, I'll show you a couple of things that I actually love of hers. Um, and my daughters, what we do every year is uh, we give our daughters mommy packs. And in the mommy packs, we put all the products that they probably will need throughout the year. Um, and in their mommy packs this year, they got, well, last, the year prior, they got some earth organics, but this year they got, they got the mother load. Um, they got the plant-based infl infusion uh, lotion bar. Um, they got the chest rub lotion bar. They got the first aid. There's uh, Aaron has a first aid stick as well. Um, lip balms. Every time I see you, you're handing me a new lip balm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good course, thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. And of course, um, these for my grandkids. So there's just one thing that I can't get one of my grandkids and he's not old enough for deodorant anyway, but um, I have a little Edward and Edward is stuck on this toothpaste that has fluoride in it. And I cannot, I've tried everything, everything. I like every time he's out of toothpaste, I'm sending a new toothpaste home with my daughter. Cause I know that she can't afford to buy like, you know, a toothpaste for him to try and then not like. So what right. happens is we send it and if he doesn't like it and then Landon, which is his older brother, doesn't like it, then it comes back to my house to be used. <laughs> Have you tried the uh, Jack and Jill brand? No, no. Look, at, look into that. They have two flavors, strawberry and blueberry, and my kids do like that. Okay. And my, and Edward doesn't like anything mint. Any, oh, yeah, he doesn't kid. like the taste of anything mint. So that might yeah. be part of it. Um, but l that brings me to let's talk about tooth powder because in when I when I'm doing my 21 day home detox immersion, which is where people um, uh, they work with me, um, it, it's an online program. You watch a 10 minute video, and then your homework really is to make better buying decisions. People are like, I'm ready to do the homework, and I'm like, your homework is this. It's just thinking. I can't just it's, go tell you to go dump your own, your, every person. It's a wonderful in. course. Oh, yes. thank you. It is. Um, but I can't go tell you to dump everything in your bathroom or everything in your kitchen sink, under your kitchen sink, cleaning products need to go. It's about making replacement purchases. And one of the things we talk about when we take a deep dive in is fluoride because fluoride is actually in tons of products. And 
again, people don't realize that it, you know, most, if you live here in the United States, I'm betting you pretty much have fluoride in your water and then you're brushing your teeth with it. And then, um, the other day I found out it was in wine. I had no idea. Um, oh, wow. yeah, there's, and that's one thing that a lot of wineries are not testing for, which is interesting. Um, but it's in tons of products that we're using and one of the ways that one place that you can eliminate it is obviously your toothpaste because it's not meant to be swallowed for sure. And it actually comes with a poison label on it because again, if someone under the age of five swallows like a dime size, it's not good. Um, but I've never really, and I've used a tooth powder once, but I've never taken a deep dive into the background of it. So please share how you came up with a tooth powder product. Yeah. So really what came about was I was using a brand um, and I just, it was leaving my teeth feeling slimy and I couldn't stand it. You know, I really wanted basically how you feel like after you leave the dentist. Um, and I started, I don't know what came about, but I'm like, there's gotta be like a tooth powder. Turns out tooth powder has been around forever. I mean, mm -hmm. really from the beginning of time, they would use bones and dirt and stuff like that. I mean, in ancient Egyptian time, um, even before toothpaste, they used to have, um, like jars full of powder. Mm -hmm. Um, and then toothpaste came, it became more convenient and easy. Um, and that's, so, what all, that's what all of our products have become, right? Yeah. We're slave to the convenience. Why we right. don't make our own products. Is be, and I've just shared that with you. I'm like, I love making my own products, but it's so much easier to know that you're sourcing good stuff and that I can just purchase it from you. Right. And you know, whereas doing a tooth powder is very, uh, strange and different, um, really give it a try because the results, I mean, in my eyes exceed what toothpaste can give and that what two minute feeling you get twice a day. I mean, so sure we're used to things because they feel so nice but um, really try to look at what the outcome and the benefits are of what you're doing. Um, you know, so the, so the tooth powder contains bentonite clay, calcium, magnesium, and cinnamon clove. So the bentonite clay is going to pull any toxins that are leaching into your teeth. It's going to replace them with the vitamins and minerals in that clay that are so beneficial. And so something like this is going to help with sensitivity. It's also going to help with, um, whitening your teeth just because it's removing those food toxins and the coffee and the tea and the wine with the fluoride. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then calcium and magnesium, those two work together. So um, another thing, just like we touched on before, magnesium is something everybody lacks. Mm -hmm. So this is good for us to get it this way. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking a pill to you know, get those optimal levels, mm -hmm. why not put it in the deodorants or make a spray or get it in the tooth powder? Um, but these two aid in absorption of each other. So if you know what tonsil stones are, or maybe you don't, you'll have something flake off in your mouth, maybe in the morning and you go, what was that? Well, that is buildup of minerals on your tonsils. And mm -hmm. in some cases, this can give irritants to kids. Um, to where they're having them removed. But if you use something like this, it's gonna take that mineral build, out, build up down. And you're not gonna have these tonsil stones that can create earaches and stuff like that. Um, wow. It's absorbing together. I did not know that. See, yeah. you taught me something today. That's awesome. Again, yeah. I haven't taken a deep dive into tooth, pow tooth powder or so, or the benefits of tooth powder. Um, right. I do tongue scraping every morning um, and my husband does that. And then we do some oil pulling. Uh, if you guys are oil pullers, please don't be spitting in your sink. Make sure you're putting it in your garbage because you really don't want that bill. <laughs> yeah. I do have a question for you on that. Now, what yeah. if you oil pull, pull and then you get in the shower and spit it in there because you don't have that pee trap? I, yeah, I would not spit no. my coconut oil in any drain whatsoever. Cause you don't, I wasn't it. sure. Yeah. It's, it's the, uh, like I have heard people that have had 
like a doctor who was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to oil pull. All of his family were oil pulling and they had to like redo all of the plumbing in their home. Oh my yeah. gosh. And you know, I'm, I'm sitting in my, um, I'm like you, I have kind of a tri-level. So I'm sitting about six feet sunk and my bathroom's over here. So I know for a fact that my drain is going underneath this slab, not up and around. <laughs> Oh, so that would be a pretty, and then we have a, we have a very large aquarium on the other side and we built a drain down there. So there's lots of drains under here. I could not imagine they'd have to rip this whole floor up to get oh, to the drains. That would um, be a mess. Yeah. So yeah, if you're oil pulling at all, I, I know a lot of people do do it in the shower. So I would just take a, a stainless steel cup not plastic, <laughs> I would just, or glass, <laughs> I would just take a stainless steel cup in there with me and spit it and then dispose of it in the garbage. But yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, is there anything else you want to, any new products on the horizon? I know because of the Corona uh, pandemic, we had to cancel your Earth Day event, which was going to be your yeah. next Kickstarter because you were actually working on trying to improve your product by not putting it in so much plastic. So is there, is there right. anything you're doing in the interim, anything you want to add any? Well, not, well, I haven't, I am living day by day right now. I am swamped with hand sanitizer. Because of the hand sanitizer. But, I was gonna say, right. Yeah. So I, I do want to touch on my phase two, what I'm calling it, um, love mother earth of organics, because I think it's important four years ago when I started this, and being in grocery stores, I mean, right now, there's plastic. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just a convenience. If you have a shelf full of glass, I mean, convenience stores don't want that either. No, and um, I was just, I, today um, in the 21 Day Detox Immersion, they're actually doing plastics in the kitchen. And I literally talk about plastic is a convenience. It's right. just been a convenience. It's just what everybody's used to. And just like I said, instead of, if you're worried about glass with your kids, go get them stainless steel cups and they make, they make silicone sippy top, uh, sippy cup tops. They make all sorts of, uh, safer or BPA or bisphenol free, right. um, tops. So I, I just know if so many moms are like, I can't do glass and I'm like, yeah. okay, but you could still do stainless steel. <laughs> Yeah, we do um, water canteens, and then we mm -hmm. also do coffee cups because the weight of coffee cups um, actually prevents a lot of spilling for my kids. So <laughs> we've been using that, and it works. Um, so so yeah, face, go back to your go, yeah, yeah. Sorry. go back to your uh, uh, plastic is a convenience. But what are you? What, where are you yeah. <laughs> so from day one, um, creating all this plastic, this one use trash has really hurt my soul. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the time where I think everybody is looking at what we're doing to this earth and the pollution that we're creating and the garbage in the trash. So um, I want to launch more from online to where I can have glass available options and refill. So say you use my tooth powder, I want to give you a glass container instead of my plastic one use. And then you're just buying a refill pack every mm -hmm. couple months. And then you just pour that in there. So less trash and that package is going to be biodegradable, things like that. Um, I'm getting more requests from my supporting retails on uh, refill options as far as jugs full of hand sanitizer where people can bring their own bottles in. Mm -hmm. um, so I really want to take organics to that next level of being more eco-friendly, being a somewhat convenient option. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think we're all headed that direction. So I'm very I, hopeful. I wholeheartedly agree. I, was, uh, I had just, um, which we can't do it right now, um, but I was noticing how much my husband and I eat out a lot because we just have different hours. And so, uh, especially on uh, Saturday and Sunday. So our date night is literally a date breakfast. That's what we do. I think I've seen we, your post. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we go out to breakfast quite a bit. Obviously we can't do that right now during the virus, but I had just purchased a, uh, not like lunch boxes, but stainless steel containers 
that were, I got a pretty big one, like nine inches. And then I got some smaller ones. They're stainless steel with, again, BPA or bisphenol free uh, plastic. And I was so excited because I'm like, yes, I'm going to be able to go into breakfast or I'm going to be able to take it to my favorite carry out place and say, instead of you putting my food, you know, I'm even okay with waiting the extra five or 10 minutes to hand them my containers yeah. instead of the plastic or getting a styrofoam or because in Ohio, we're still single use plastic. Um, right. So I was so excited to do that and I can't do it now. No. I can't go check. I can't go try out my new takeout containers. Um, right. Cause again, it just like you said, it hurts me. I mean, once you, I, and I hope I see this with this, I haven't, again, we just rolled out the plastic module today in my detox. Um, but I'm hoping that I, it clicks with them. And again, every, after I did a complete clean out of my kitchen with plastic, because I just came home and I was like, oh my God, we have to get rid of every piece of plastic in my kitchen. And I thought my husband would think I lost my mind, but we had been on, a, you know, we, we were using all that, but we were using a lot of natural products or what I would make out of the kitchen, but I really wasn't thinking about the plastic thing. And uh, I thought he would think I was losing my mind, but once you like do that initial clean out and you're like realizing what impact you're putting on the earth, you're realizing what badness comes in some of the containers um, or using some of the containers over and over again. You're like, what do I bring in my home and being really conscientious about those plastic products. So I, right. I applaud you. I know that it's not an easy thing for you to convert being a small business, which is why we all need to support the small businesses like yours um, yeah. so that you can bring that type of uh, offering on to your clients because you're making an awesome product. So let's just make it more awesome by, you know, getting rid of the plastic, the single use plastic. Right. So thank you. Yes. Anything else you want to add? I don't think you know, so. Products other than, I mean, you had to whip up a hand sanitizer that had, it was an alcohol based like, in a minute. Oh. <laughs> The struggle is real. I fought it for like two days and my friends like, stop fighting it. Just do it. Yeah. I'm like, fine. It's um, going to happen. But I had a, uh, since we're not quite, we got a few more minutes um, and then we'll be at an hour. I can do one. I want to make, I didn't want to take any more than an hour of your time. Um, I had vodka or um, I had a little bit of moonshine, moonshine left. Yeah, because again, the same thing, the hand sanitizers were that out and everything that I made again was essential oil based. And I was like thinking to myself, you know, I made witch hazel um, hand sanitizers, but I know that's not as strong. Um, and I was like, you know what, I've just got this <laughs> made in the hills because my family's from, from the hills. And oh, I just had this that's the good bit stuff. Left. Yeah. I just had this little bit left in a jar. And I was like, I remember granny saying this, like, oh yeah, if you get a scratch, just take some shine to it. And I was like, that's when I really put two and two together that alcohol kills germs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I made a little bit and then I ended up getting cheap vodka and I actually um, started thinking, okay, what proof is this? And I started doing the math too. So I'm glad that you also said you had to go and do the math. Because right. people just think that the recipes that they pull online are going to give the strength that they need, but they don't realize when you add two parts of this and one part of this, you still need to balance that alcohol percentage out. So thank you right. for doing the math. <laughs> yeah, and and definitely make sure where you get the alcohol because, um, like, say you're using Everclear down in Kentucky, it's 95%, mm -hmm. percent, which is 180 yes. proof. Um, when mm -hmm. you get it at say jungle gyms, it's only 75.5. Yes. So. Glad you brought that up because yes, that is very true. Um, I believe I was buying old smoky moonshine when I would go to Tennessee Oh yeah. and it was stronger down there. I think they have the same proof now, but yes, thank you for mentioning that. In fact, I know that a lot of essential oil, um, uh, I don't, I'm not sure about Young Living. I'm not sure what their 
processes for cleaning the bottles. Um, I actually know the guy that it, that um, is on the account to make the little <laughs> essential oil bottles. Long story. Oh, wow. um, but um, well, he contracts to bring them into the country. So, um, but I do know some essential oil bottlers actually use Everclear to clean the bottles before they bottle the essential oils. So that goes to show you how powerful alcohol can be and yeah. why you want to be careful about taking your home hooch and making a hand sanitizer. Right. right. <laughs> Cause I can just imagine what some people have come up with. I know. I think my label says, um, if you have a cut on your hand, this will burn. <laughs> yeah. 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 That hurt. Oh yeah. So I'm glad we got to talk about making homemade hooch sanitizers. <laughs> Because well, I know that my vodka that I bought did not make the cut. But again, we're in really extraordinary times. Right. So things that we are used to going and getting, I, I know we're going to, like, I just got, again, five years from now, we'll be laughing about this toilet paper. You know, are you ever going to look at toilet paper the same way after you've lived through that? Our kids are going to be laughing about it for years and then how many people went out and bought hoses for their toilet to have a bidet <laughs> oh my gosh I hope nobody really did that oh no I've seen I've seen friends on Facebook like my husband hooked it up and then um <laughs> I I saw someone hook it up and it didn't act exactly work real well so they screwed up their plumbing on the toilet and I was like mm, yeah that's really not <laughs> <laughs> At least you have time to fix it, I guess. Yeah, desperate times, I guess. Desperate times. We we all resort to, yeah, good old YouTube for a tutorial and then find out we screwed it up royal and it's going to cost us more money. Yeah, so sad. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> That's funny. But That's we great. all are learning from this experience and definitely growing. I, I tell everyone um, that I am just looking forward to the other side. I always yeah. think to myself, okay, this is the rock in the road. What does the other side look like? And let's concentrate on the other side and not, I mean, obviously we have to pay attention to the rock in the road, but I want to keep my positive focus on what's on the other side. And I believe this is really yeah. going to bring us together. And we are, like you said, going to see a lot of impact as far as mother earth goes, the products we bring in our home, how careful we are about, you do make, you, you make soap too. I do. Yeah. Um, that one is getting a little phased out though. So okay. the individual size is just so hard. Um, I create a formula where I can make it concentrated. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's going to be a nice big game changer. So buying mm -hmm. a big bottle that's going to last you a year versus me having to make little ones all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and people don't realize that either that, you know, um, you can buy in bulk and that type of, you know, I talked about buying yeah. two, 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 two tubes of toothpaste and getting one free. Why are we just not buying a bulkier item that, right. you know, when we don't have to have this shelf stability of, and again, a lot of the things that we put in our products have to be shelf stable because they're not. Yeah. It's anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to go rabbit down hole. that rabbit hole. We're <laughs> almost at an hour and this is awesome. Thank you for sharing your morning, your day with me. And yes. um, I'm going to add this to um, my YouTube channel, which I just got up and running. So this will be a very early YouTube video. Great. Uh, I'm going to add it to my detox course because I think there's some really great information about, again, shelf stability. We talked about fluoride. We talked about a lot of alternatives, why you right. shouldn't use handmade uh, hooch sanitizer. <laughs> Just drink it. <laughs> drink it. Just drink it. <laughs> and um, and much success to you. I you know Thank some you. Uh, some businesses are really struggling right now. I happen to be one of them. I mean, um, not from the health coaching standpoint, but um, I also do a lot of uh, some business coaching, and my heart is breaking for some of my clients that have had to totally you know lay off their workforce. And then my daughter still owns a boutique and my parents are still doing a business and, you know, it's just halted. It's yeah. just some businesses aren't doing well. And I tell everyone, you know, some of the greatest 
business people we've had and some of the greatest discoveries we've had is through times like this. So right. while you fought yeah. yourself with that hand sanitizer, you've been able to continue to grow your business and hopefully there'll be better fruits that come from this tree. Hey, hopefully the people who weren't thinking healthy before are grabbing my hand sanitizer and seeing what else I offer. So exactly. exactly. I'm very grateful and appreciate it. And um, yeah. yeah, you know, and my heart goes out stay, to a lot of people right now. Yeah. And everybody stay, do your gratitudes every day, whether it's now during the virus and the pandemic or, or after, because again, we need to focus on that positive part on the other side. And I see lots of beautiful things coming from you. Thank you, Erin. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Bye guys. Bye. Thanks, Danielle.